Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Today I'm going to be playing a beautiful little weapon against the move d4 here, a move which I often find extremely boring to play against, and that move is c5, the old Benoni. Now, the old Benoni uh, is different. I was going to say the old Benoni uh, is different to the kind of classical or standard Benoni, sorry, where normally we play knight f6 and after c4 then play c5. And we get a position where they probably play d5 and we can maybe even play a Benko Gambit, etc. Um, I tend to like going for this just because it throws off d4 players in general. You know, those who like to play the London system, the scum of the earth and bane of my existence, um, are generally not able to do so, at least immediately, not able to go for their algorithmic opening uh, of just bishop f4 immediately because we can just take this, go here, develop the knight with temple and the queen, etc. But they've played c3, which to me says that I'm going to play the London system anyway. If I see bishop f4 right here, I fear for my skull as I may slam it into the wall behind me. They take, okay. Okay, interesting stuff. So they take the pawn, which if they'd done immediately, uh, I would have played e6. And in fact, I'm still gonna play e6, but I'd imagine they're gonna play b4 here. Uh, and it actually could be a useful move. Had they done that immediately without c3, uh, if they'd taken e6, then b4, we could play a5. And if you go c3, takes, takes, queen f6 there, for those of you that can visualize that, actually traps the rook uh, from some insane long range. However, here, they've already played the move c3, so if we play this, they could play a3 if they wanted. I mean, that, that'd be kind of no real reason to do so. But we've gambited a pawn. We've gambited a pawn for what? Well, namely because I hate d4, d5 positions, and so I would do anything not to be in one. I'm actually going to play b6 here. Now, I don't know if this makes any sense whatsoever. Actually, no, I can guarantee it makes at least some sense. Why? Because we've played d7, we've got the pawn, sorry, we don't haven't played d7, the pawn is still on d7, but we've played e6. Uh, so the bishop, you know, probably developing it through this diagonal is going to be a little difficult. We've got, you know, e6, that characteristic move of the French defense. Uh, it's going to be quite difficult to get that bad French bishop, even though this isn't anywhere close to a closed French. Uh, but it's going to be quite difficult to develop it through these pawns, of course. Uh, and so actually opening up b7, isn't a bad idea at all uh, to fan this bishop. Also, we get to develop the queen here. We open up some interesting files. Bishop e3 is interesting. So I'm just thinking we could maybe make use of the c file and try and put pressure on the pawn on c3 while also giving our bishop maybe a little bit more reign. Also, we've kind of deferred the pawn from the center. Maybe we could make a more meaningful claim to the center. Um, but bishop e3 is just annoying. But honestly, I'll play queen c7. I'll just keep an eye on that pawn, which means that at least immediately developing the knight seems risky. Although actually, if I were to take the pawn there, Rook c1, take the pawn here, uh, I would lose this and probably the game. You know, it is always risky to go pawn grabbing with your queen a little early. So, you know, our opponent just develops. Okay, fine. I'm thinking this bishop looks pretty dumb. It's in front of the e pawn, which means that this bishop's going to have trouble developing down this diagonal. Although that might lend them to playing uh, in a similar way to me playing b6 and bishop b7. They might go for this kind of uh, g3, bishop g2 setup. In fact, maybe given that they play d4, maybe they're uh, maybe they're actually a Catalan player. Now, one thing that I really like the idea of is harassing this poorly placed bishop. Like for instance, knight g4, if you play for like, let's say g3, we just take take and you've got horrible pawns. Uh, and I very much like my position there. And even if you defend it with like queen d2, we could still take take and just have, you know, the bishop pair which uh, maybe even with the weak dark squares here could be exploitable, maybe g6, bishop g7. I do need to hurry up though. I have not played chess. By the way, this is the first video I'm recording after I've finished my exams. I've not played chess properly for a minute now. I'm, I am slow. I am slow and I'm rusty, but we're going to do something beautiful here. I'm thinking 95, but then there's maybe this, maybe this. Doesn't seem completely ridiculous. Okay, we're going to start with bishop b7. I would imagine they're going to push the pawn. There we go. Honestly, why not 95? We're gonna we're gonna threaten this uh, this bishop just chilling here. I would imagine they should move it. Although to d4 we could maybe play knight c6. I like this. I like this. And the point is that I think I'm just gonna trade off this this knight for the bishop, win the bishop pair, uh, and then try and have some nice snipers looking at this opponent's king. We might even play king f8, leave our king here and play h5 and h4 and try and attack this king if it castles. Although that has softened this up. Goodness gracious me, that is that is a soft diagonal now. A very soft diagonal indeed. If we take here, you take with this pawn, I take this with check. Take here, if you take with this pawn, I could maybe even take this because if knight takes, queen takes. If you block with the queen, obviously I'm just taking the rook. If you move the king up, that's checkmate in one, I think. <laughs> if you take with the knight... Hold on, I've got a bit lost in my calculation. We're grabbing this bishop, though. 
because uh, no one cares. I think they have to take with the queen here. But if they do, that leaves this extremely unstable. This move has completely destabilized their whole position, I think. This this looks like we're putting a lot of good pressure on the right places. They have four options to take with here, and I think they're all at least slightly problematic. The C pawn, we can take this at least. Probably they're something more exciting. Maybe even take like this and throw in a fork, who knows. Yeah, this pawn though, we can take here. And we open up the bishop, and if knight takes, you can't play knight takes because we go check. And if you block with the knight, we take the rook. I mean, okay, it has to be this. Open up literally everything. Now, if you can't take with the knight, supposedly you could like pin my knight to my queen here. But again, the knight and the queen are within each other's range uh, in the sense that the knight could step back while holding the queen, uh, which is super useful to know. And our opponent hasn't had the kind of uh, developmental time to to develop this knight and therefore be able to play rook c1 here uh probably by virtue of the fact that we've you know <laughs> what, what we've done to this side of the board is we've let them take here they've then played b4 then we've let them take here and it's kind of you know playing b4 to support this pawn we then gambit the pawn almost to make redundant the fact that they had played b4 they've then kind of invested a decent amount of tempo in just creating weaknesses here and i think this e3 move was weird but they played a move they played queen d3 okay i mean they had to move the queen so this makes sense to attack the knight as well uh although hello oh my lord does this just completely win on the spot guys the king can't move out of the discovery and if you try and block the discovery with the oh you could block it with this knight though that's annoying i didn't think of that at all that was a little short-sighted maybe Maybe taking first and then playing check, for instance, could have been a good idea. Although I still have to be doing well. I still have to be doing well. Okay, hear me out. What about knight e4? Knight e4 is interesting because we threaten to take. And if you take, we take the rook here. Knight e4, maybe bishop g2. I take, you can take here, but then we take the bishop. I do really like this. We then open up the pin. We don't allow rook c1. We could also at some point be considering a nice, uh, you know, uh, rook c8, maybe even a queen sack. I think this is very pretty. I like this a lot. Let's go here. Got the pin. Got a kind of another pin. Putting pressure on the pin. Queen nice and open. I mean, it seems you can't move either of your knights. This one, literally, it's an illegal move to try to move this knight. I should use the, the look at this, look at this multicolored stuff. Should use the red to elucidate which knight I'm talking about there. But yeah, you literally can't move this knight. And therefore, if you move this knight as well, we'll, we'll, use, we'll use yellow here. Look at this. I love Lee Chess. And Levy Rosman will call me a communist uh, for that. <laughs> what the hell is that? Do they want to take back or or no or what's going on they they aren't requesting a take back i don't understand are they just going to resign opponent just self-destructs under all the pressure they want a rematch should we give them the rematch i know you just said yes let's go e4 e4 double whammy today because that one was i mean beautiful but then ended extremely abruptly for some odd reason uh we're going to claim the full center develop a knight and play bishop c4 baby we are not going to take any any hmm okay this feels like there should be a sacrifice here any mercy is what i was going to finish that sentence with but i don't think there is a sacrifice because then we can you know we go like this they take like this we take here in bullet i play this every single time if i play knight e5 here for instance it would be kind of funny it's like they take my queen and we checkmate them however knight e5 you know if pawn takes we could maybe take the bishop it would be kind of interesting uh, i'm just not sure it works although h6 does soften up the light squares around here at least a tad that much i'm sure of sure of not to be confused with alexi shirov uh, an amazing player one who i very much idolize we're just gonna play bishop e3 we're gonna stabilize the pawn we're gonna keep developing fat center you're kind of making these these prophylaxes i don't know if that is actually the, the plural there of prophylaxis but we can hope and i just think we we should be at least a little better uh, and our opponent has only used nine seconds for the first five moves. I think they're pretty tilted after that loss. Okay, d5. We could go for that. It is feasible. I'm not sure I love it. I guess then I could just go back. We kind of close stuff up. I don't want to do that. But then what are my options? Play c3. <gasps> c3 to open up queen b3 is an idea. That's tempting. That's tempting. Queen b3, hit this. f7. Support the center. Bang. Bang. What are you doing? Take here. I take here. Perturb the king. But yeah, the queen putting pressure here. c3 and queen b3 is very nice. Very ortho schnapp like very uh, very opera game like, although not really C3. So they bring the queen up, yeah, to defend here and also to, uh, after I do this, be able to play rook here without the knight hanging. All this makes sense, fine. They also have this. Maybe this wasn't so strong, actually, I don't know. Grabbing a pawn seemed greedy here, though. But we do soften up these light squares. We do absolutely soften them up and then bishop here and pushing this. You know what? Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Play your stupid little rook b8. This is greedy, 
looks to be maybe a poison pawn, but it is a poison that I doubtless have the antidote. And that antidote is going to be a whole lot of weak light squares, the move d5, the move bishop b5. I'm feeling this making sense. Now, admittedly, I think my whole center is about to collapse and they can take this. Yeah, not only is my center vaguely collapsing, also they can take here, also they can threaten my queen, also they can take here. You know, I, I, <laughs> maybe I've made better decisions in the past than taking that pawn there, but... Queen a4 seems reasonable. There's no, like, rook here, for instance, because the pawn holds, we're chilling. What you'd kind of like to be able to do is uh, is bring the bishop back to where the queen is. Maybe they move the queen to prepare that move, but that seems a little slow. No way you just took that pawn. I guess their rook was going to be some tempo for, for playing d5 in the first place. But this doesn't come with actual, like, any tempo. You're not threatening to take anything. I just go here, right? If this doesn't work, I mean, th this has to be a good move. You have to sack your rook here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. If they didn't sack their rook, they were toasted on those light squares. And now we're just up an exchange. Now, admittedly, this is hanging. But at least we have the uh, the consolation that if they trash our pawns first, then we'd be protecting it. Yeah, they do just take here. I, I think I'm winning, for sure. Let's, let's, let's give myself some credit here. I think d5 is still a really good move. You cannot advance with this knight. You have to go back to either d8, which seemingly makes no sense. Although maybe you could do a little reroute. No, because the pawn would be here. Basically, d5... Knight e7. We can give a check. I don't know if that does anything particularly strong. I guess we stop the king from castling, although they could block with the queen here. Takes. Bishop takes. I think this makes sense. I do think this makes a lot of sense. Because uh, also we open this up. They do go back to d8. Wow. That's extremely interesting. I'm going to take with the queen. We're going to go into this endgame. Uh, because I think probably they take with the bishop here. I grab a pawn and then there is nothing stopping my a pawn. I think that is actually going to be one of the key differences here in this endgame. That I have an a pawn backed with a rook. They do take with the king. That's, I mean, opponents got some, some balls. I can give them that much. Pause. Uh, okay, we grab this because you're not trapping it because we take on passant and retreat. I take here. Admittedly, my pawns are trash, but actually, a bit of activity for the rook never hurt anyone. Uh, although this is looking a little unhealthy. Although knight kind of wants to develop here anyway. I'll do it. I'll then kick the knight and put my knight here and just start shoving this pawn forward. Yeah, I think we are just winning this endgame. Uh, where's your knight even going? to h7. In fact, is that even progress for me though? Because then you can reroute. I, I feel like you want to do that anyway. <laughs> and then you're, maybe the bishop's just, uh, well, the pawn, sorry, is just a target for the bishop. I'm not sure. I think they're going to move the knight and then uh, bring the rook across, which would make a lot of sense. Okay. You know what? H4, I don't know why I'm trying to argue that h4 is not a good move. We, we free up our knight. They do have to go back to here. We could probably play knight e4. Although we kind of maybe walk into F5 stuff. I should start pushing my pawn. I really should. Like, why not? There are one, two, three, four, five moves to be made for promoting this pawn. Let's get one of them. Get one of them in. Here, 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 here. Hang my rook. Hold on, just for a, just for a, just for a second, please venture with me on this pipe dream. A5, rook here. I pre-move a6, they think it's a mistake, they take the bishop, I take here, they take my rook, I go king e2, they take here and I promote, if they go here, then there's this, there's no way to stop this prom pawn promoting, I would cry with happiness if this works, I think the problem is they can just take my pawn in the end, a5, rook here, 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 they take my pawn, oh that sucks, okay I mean we're still gonna be winning here completely but I'm just, I'm so upset about this, okay I guess we'll venture down that path in the analysis, what about rook b1, that doesn't seem ridiculous, because you can't play rook b8, you do this I can take, take and kind of just trash all these pawns here, 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 oh hold on, Okay, rook b1 it is. I don't know why that took me so long to, to find that idea. Knight c5, we absolutely annihilate the pawns while getting our bishop out of the way, clearing the path of this pawn, etc. Uh, should we castle? <laughs> Not entirely ridiculous to castle here, but I think king e2 is a far more uh, constructive move. Because, I mean, we just want to connect the rooks is kind of the point. Let's just play king e2. Okay, let's win the end game. I'm, I'm desperately sad that um, that my beautiful, beautiful idea... Oh, we could play knight e4 there, a little trap. No, we couldn't because the bishop holds this. I... Okay, now I'm just hallucinating trying to come up with the uh, sexy finishes to this game. Okay, you're going to start pushing this. No one cares. I'm going to go rook g1 and just threaten this. You could play bishop f6. Kind of takes away this. I also did just hang a... No, I didn't because then I take him with check. Uh, we're just going to push. I mean, that is that is move two of the five that we need to get done to make progress there. Then, not entirely sure what now happens. Kind of liking this. Let's do this. Just threaten the the loose pawns that we've created. You bring the king up, I think that's kind of risky business. Yeah, we can play this and you might be walking into some kind of mating net at some point. I see no reason not to play c4. We we, we lock this down. Uh, you can push this actually with tempo on the rook, which 
may or may not suck. Although we could take, you take. <laughs> no, that just doesn't work. I was thinking I go check, but you just bring the bishop back. That was like the dumbest thing I've ever considered. Hold on, hold on. Takes here, right? We take with the knight. No, 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 no. Stop being, nah, this is just inane. Yeah, I go here. Okay. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Let's just, let's just chill out. You know, not try and do anything too drastic. Keep this stuff on light squares. Let's go over here. Threaten to infiltrate here. I mean, obviously the night holds, but this is not a bad file to control. This is interesting. Uh, you might be getting... I don't believe this. I don't believe in this at all. I do not believe in this at all. Yeah. You go here. Oh my lord. I take this. You take here. Oh. Oh. Oh, zut alors. Damn, an absolute... I mean, the knight was just waiting there. Now, we don't have that much time, so it could be an interesting idea to sack this. Mm, I think we should probably just take here, honestly. Yeah, we'll just take the pawn. We are actually threatening... Uh, not mate, but definitely a very, very... Uh, Powerful move. I might even just... Yeah, we're gonna do this. Oh my god, are we gonna Zogtvang our opponent? Hold on, look at this. The king can't move because it loses the knight. Let's let's Zogtvang... I know I have 17 seconds, but you gotta have some fun when you're playing this game, eh? Okay, here. 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 Zogtvang, right? I guess you can push this. But then we do this. Oh, I love this game so much. I love this game so much. I'm gonna run them out of moves here. Okay. Wait, I have 9.2 seconds. This was so, so ill-advised. But I still think you're running out of moves because now we go catch up this pawn. Oh, this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> and now they run out of moves completely. You either move the king and lose your knight. Goodness gracious me. Goodness gracious me. Do we stalemate our opponent? That would be a poetic ending to this game, I think. That would be an absolutely poetic ending to this game. No doubt. That lagged for so long, my heart just fell out of my chest, oh my lord. Oh wait, that was the second game! We're not giving this guy another rematch, come on man, what are you doing? That was disgusting! That was so disgusting, oh my lord. Okay, so this first game requires exceedingly little analysis, I mean it was pretty much flat until they made a big mistake in playing E3, which, actually, this is an interesting position to look at, no doubt, because E3 doesn't look stupid here, uh, but, appealing to the fact that this bishop is so strong, uh, and the amount of tactics that were just contingent on that exact fact. You know, E3 is just an unforgivable uh, structural weakening. Now, I mean, this opening wasn't even that dumb. Uh, B6 was reasonable. A5 would have been uh, significantly, well, not even significantly better, just better. Queen C7. Okay, get the bishop developed. Knight here, great move. And I mean, yeah, this was just actually a really good game and well punished. And then we take here, we take here. 94 best move and take that. Yeah, so that was basically a perfect game other than the inaccuracy of playing, I think, B6. Yeah, but, I mean, who cares? This was interesting. Anyway, the rematch was far more noteworthy. 96% accuracy with one mistake, one inaccuracy. Although, you know, you look at this graph, uh, we did have a bit of a missed win here uh, when we took on B7. That makes complete sense. I knew taking on B7 was kind of dumb. But after that point, it seems to have been a relatively smooth conversion and then just some disgusting endgame stuff. So, opponent played 92% accuracy. Okay, so let's go through that game. So, E4, uh, and then I have no idea what this opening was at all. I just developed pretty well. And then H6 preparing, uh, or rather preventing, sorry, the idea of Knight G5. Uh, which would have potentially been with a, a little bishop f7. Let's say they played uh, a6, for instance. Uh, we could have taken here, taken here, given a check, unveiled onto the bishop. Pretty common tactic uh, with the bishop on g4 and on c4. So, of course, our opponent didn't uh, allow that. They played h6. Some standard developing there. c3 was reasonable. Queen b3 here. Um, I should have taken on... What? Oh, because after the queen takes, we then take here. I... Mm, okay, I could have seen that. I definitely could have seen that. Hopefully you guys weren't screaming at your screens for bishop f7. I don't think it's that obvious though, actually. Because you kind of, I don't know. 
but the queen is overworked. They raised the queen to do two jobs and it can't do both simultaneously. So that was pretty dumb. Uh, the point is that they would have then probably had to move the rook, maybe b8 to get some activity here at least, uh, and then have to check, maybe return with the bishop. You know, th this is probably a playable game for them. Uh, we are only two pawns up after all. I mean, it could be three, but then, you know, this, this might get uncomfortable. I don't really know. But there is the, the kind of missed win. That's the only reason taking on b7 seems to have been a mistake, uh, is that we had a, a better opportunity there. Move the queen, move the queen again. Yeah, taking there, bishop b5, they had to sack. Uh, and at this point, I mean, it's playable from our opponent. And in fact, they played it quite well until they took there, which is very, very interesting. Maybe because that like, kind of removes the knight and then we get a bunch of tempo to move forward. I mean, knight d2. I did feel very comfortable, even though my pawns look kind of ugly uh, with that happening. Plus, I was also pretty happy about the open g file. Uh, and so, yeah, taking there was the mistake. Although, again, can't necessarily blame my opponent. They're trying to find counterplay. Uh, and maybe they think knight here, they can exploit the... Uh, the weak pawns but yeah we bring our knight in things kind of worked out pretty well for us we start pushing that pawn bring the rook over uh take take oh one sec just because it would have been oh so lovely so what i was trying to do uh if you guys remember is play this they come over with the rook i play this they take take i lose both of my rooks king e2 and here uh, and then promote. And the point is that they, they couldn't go back to stop the promotion. They couldn't come here uh, after King E2 because, of course, the Rook and the Knight hold. Uh, this, if they had gone for that line, would have even only been plus 1.4 because after I promote, I've just lost a, like all of my pieces to do that. However, doubtless, it would have been uh, probably winning for me, I think. Uh, at least slightly winning and probably it would have been quite hard for my opponent to hold on to all their pieces. We can just venture in here and just start gobbling stuff up. But yeah, the problem with that line is that at this point, after they take the Bishop and I take here, uh, they do not have to take this. They can, in fact, take the pawn and i kind of just lose my uh my beautiful past pawn which proved to be such a beautiful beautiful asset uh and instead i went for rook b1 took took uh and in fact this became again a really weak pawn that was a huge asset uh, and then we go into the g file push the pawn bring the knight across push here they push and i just lift the rook they take i bring my king in uh bringing the rook onto the e file was actually the best move hold on i played this really accurately from here Going in with the rook, best move. Coming across with the rook, best move. Ooh. I mean, I guess it was kind of obvious that it had to be, but yeah, then this infiltration is just disgusting. The only legal move here, I remember saying as they stepped into here, that this is kind of looking a bit mating netty. Um, but then, yeah, we can just trade that. And instead of just taking the rook straight away, rub some salt in the wound uh, with the knight fork as well. Getting our knight to a beautiful place from which we then set up this beautiful end game construction where I just think, okay, I've got less than 20 seconds here, but they can't move their king because if they were to move their king, they would lose the knight. And I'm thinking, hold on, you lose all these pawns, you're going to have to move the king, or you could, for instance, move the pawn. I move my pawn here, uh, and then we get into a beautiful position, let's say, like this, this. You then actually can't come up at all here. And imagining that all of these pawns had gone off the board, uh, we would have just been able to grab this and then walk down and promote, or walk down and promote, etc. So I thought that was a pretty kind of funny, but also just enjoyable way to play that. Um, so I go for this. I'm just playing on the wrong side of the board, effectively. I should have just probably, uh, you know, gone and promoted my pieces. However, uh, F4... They should have played... Ah, they should have played h4. That's interesting. Because I go across here, here, here. No. I mean, obviously, it's all losing anyway. But I guess they could go check here. And things... I mean, I'm still going to talk to them at some point. Like, you give this check. I go here, 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 here. And again, you, you reach that same... Uh, took time position, but it ended up being that they took here uh, and instead we had a bit of composure um, And in fact this position was a took time as well pushing the pawn was the best move look mate in eight to mate in seven because if I take this pawn here uh, They can push and am I losing here? No, I'm not losing here because we actually have king e6 and after they push Knight b7 here and mate. That's also really pretty actually. I didn't even need to promote the pawn. I prefer my idea. I prefer the Tugsvang idea. It's just funnier. Uh, Tugsvanging our opponent into pushing. We then go and just literally collect up all the pawns. Eventually then uh, they reach the position where they have to move the king. Uh, we take this and then bring the knight over here. Take here with check. I had this pre for a second which would have made things significantly more complicated. Uh, pre with the check. Push. Check. Here. Realize I have 1.5 seconds. Give a check. Give another check. There was mate in one here. It was this. I didn't play that. I played the wrong check instead. But hopefully you can forgive me uh, because I had literally no time. Uh, and then it lagged out at the end. Nearly had a heart attack. But we got the win with precisely one second left. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this much longer video than usual. Actually, after editing, I'm not entirely sure how long it's going to be. But it's 38 minutes on recording right now. It's definitely a 20 plus minute segment of Will Taylor Chess for your day. Which I'm sure has raised your QOL uh, or quality of life for those of you who aren't so fluent with acronyms. <laughs> by frankly obscene 
amounts. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy, like, comment, and subscribe. That would all be super appreciated. I'm trying to grow this channel. The flipping summer grind is here, baby. I finished my exam uh, literally three hours ago. I finished my final exam. For the past maybe six weeks, more like two months, in fact, I've been really locked into my uh, maths and philosophy degree. But this summer, you're going to see some huge things from the Will Taylor Chess channel. We're going to see minimum of three videos a week. We're going to see some live streams each week. We're going to see some shorts. We're going to see some improvements on uh, on the coaching that I currently do. If any of you are interested in that, go to willtaylorchess.com. Have a little look. It's like five pounds an hour. Thank you very much. I'm exceedingly excited for the next hundred odd days until I have to do my third year of university. Uh, but even then, I won't focus until my exams come around. So, you know, I'll, I'm here. I'm back, baby. Will Taylor Chess is back. Go and enjoy your day. Thanks very much for watching. Subscribe.